What's up everybody, ODC that's me here, and this is my submission for Cobra Month, aka Cobra Convergence. I want to thank um, Strident for nominating me for this Cobra Convergence. Uh, Strident, a very good friend of mine. Please go check out his channel if you have been unfortunate enough to not subscribe. Please go over there and subscribe. And uh, I want to also thank, uh, even though it wasn't initially invited to do this was just kind of like an open forum to do Cobra Convergence uh, uh, submissions uh, but I do want to thank uh, Strident for nominating me um, thank you very much um, so my review here and this is just gonna be a little bit more basic I don't have any you know big epic story driven uh, Cobra Convergence uh, video here I just kind of wanted to maybe dumb it down a little bit and just kind of focus more on uh, a review and this is kind of like a combo review here I did want to add a vintage uh, piece in into this review and also I wanted to add uh, what I really collect which is modern GI Joe's um, not that I don't own any vintage GI Joe's which I do but um, I'm more of a modern GI Joe collector um, so right here is <laughs> one of my favorite Cobra vehicles um, and it does actually combat with the the devil fish i want to say is this is probably the cobra answer to the devil fish um but i think this is a little this is like the devil fish on steroids to me uh really but i'll get to to my explanation as to why i think that is um my other half of my review right now is um going to be the cobra eel the 25th anniversary cobra eel now you could include the 50th anniversary with a bit a little bit different paint deco i think he had a little bit different of a chest piece right here um you could include that in this review um but i'm going with the 25th anniversary one just because why not uh <laughs> it's one of my favorite figures to be honest with you and uh i'm pretty pleased with um, how this figure turned out. Uh, the 50th anniversary one, I believe, does actually have some added articulation in the wrists, and I believe the uh, ankle joints are a little bit better off as far as that's concerned, and I believe it also has a little chest piece going on here. Sorry, I don't mean to have my hand in the way there, apologize. But uh, there's that. Um, also, with the Cobra Eel, um, and we'll just move the piranha out of the way here. Um, talking about the cobra eel here, as you can see, he does have quite a bit of detail going throughout. Let me actually just get this out of the way because it is kind of in the way a little bit there. The cobra eel, one of my favorite troopers, I would say, uh, as far as cobra is concerned, I want to say top five troopers. maybe top two actually I'd say between this guy and the elite of the elite which would be the Cobra para uh, Viper I should say which is this is just an awesome figure and if you don't happen to have either one of these figures I would definitely suggest that you go pick um, both of these guys up um, you can still get them for uh, I want to say around the you know cheap price um, I think you probably get them for around ten dollars or less, uh, even mint on card. Uh, here is so there's the Cobra Eel, and here is his little file card. So if you want to pause that and read it, you can. To me, I always like fell in love with the Cobra Eels due to them being pretty much the the elite of the elite, and the uh, the para viper or paratroopers, Cobra paratrooper, excuse me. Uh, or you can call them pair of vipers, um, being the elite of the elite. <laughs> the the uh, cobra eels are being are the uh, the elite troopers, but the the pair of vipers are the elite of the elite, plucked from the uh, the ranks of the eels themselves. So pretty cool there. The uh, helmet is removable. You can take that off. Let me just get his his uh, hands free here. And uh, let's pop his mask off. What you do have to do is there's a little peg on his mask. And what you do have to do is you have to depeg the breather, rebreather, I should say. And then you just simply want to pop the helmet off his head. And there it reveals a balaclava head. What 
which I think looks pretty decent. If my camera will focus here. There we are. As you can see, this little chest piece that he's got here is also connected through his backpack on his back here. That looks pretty cool. I think this uh, would have been a, a good chance for Hasbro to include maybe a couple pegs on the, uh, I want to say, almost like uh, uh, the backpack portion of his... Uh, Oxygen. I, I want to say this is almost like an oxygen tank, and as you can see right here on the bottom of his pack are kind of like, a, I guess I want to say little, um, uh, what would you call those, propellers of some sort for underwater, in case he's got to get somewhere quick, he can kind of propel himself off, I want to say that's what those look like, almost um, exhaust ports. It almost looks like a jet pack, but for underwater sir, uh, purposes so he can swim faster throughout the water. Um, yeah, like I said, it would have been nice if they would have included some sort of maybe clip system here, or like a peg system, so you could, if you wanted to have him not only have his harpoon gun, you could have that clipped onto the back like so. Um, you could also include him with a maybe like a submachine gun, so when he gets out of the water, and he's not just uh, going for uh, the demolition route, you could also have him um, leaving the water, ditching his backpack here. That's what I'm going to keep calling it. Sorry if I'm setting anyone. Well, it's not a backpack. It's a, it's a blah blah blah. <laughs> but um, uh, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, he's. It would be nice to have him with, uh, you know, one more weapon uh, for for weapon storage. He does have a couple uh, options as far as weapon storage does go for the sides here. He does come with two knives and here is the first knife and it is a serrated on one side and sharp on the other and it is a bulkier knife and then on the other side it's pretty much the exact same thing so he is dual wielding these kind of Rambo-esque huge bladed knives so that is pretty useful underwater I'm gonna be honest with you guns don't shoot too well underwater and let's see if I can let's see where he's been and okay there we go and there you go now you have him dual wielding his knives on land and his flippers you can pop those off so there that's that this is pretty much what he would look like out of water with all his gear uh, mo the majority of his gear off and you can actually remove this You'll have to pop the head off, which is not a big ordeal. Pop the head off, and then remove this, and then pop the head back on, and there you go. That's what he'll look like. Let me fix his head because it's looking a little weird. <laughs> there we go. Now he's in uh, his combat stance, well, kind of a combat stance. I guess you could flip one of these knives around, have him holding it underneath. Um, but I, overall, I really like the sculpt here. I think it looks really good. Let me get these knives out of his hand. And uh, really, pr really pleased with, um, I don't know, for, for some reason, I, I've always been, a, I was on a swim team myself, and uh, I've always enjoyed uh, boats and, uh, uh, what was it, boats and planes have always, have always uh, really caught my eye, but for, whenever it came to G.I. Joe, I was always gravitated towards, you know, uh, you know, there's land, sea, and air, and I was always kind of gravitating towards, uh, you know, sea for some reason. And Cobra very, very focused on sea, uh, hence being Cobra Island and, uh, you know, being more sea-based and usually doing more sea um, offensive maneuvers. Really enjoy this figure. Love the sculpt. Like I said, the sculpt is, is you know, it is there. There are pieces right here on, he's got like little pouches on his wetsuit here on uh, the top uh, he's got kind of I want to say what is that sculpt let's get in here and take a better look here he does have some other detail right here it looks like maybe more pouches or something like that maybe like ammunition rounds something like that maybe uh, oh this actually you know what it is it looks to be uh, maybe harpoon 
uh, cartridges or something like that. I'm not sure. Not 100% sure there because I feel like a harpoon would be like around this long and you'd have to feed it into this. But it's got also, his harpoon gun's got multiple harpoons in it. Um, so that's pretty awesome on its own. The um, His little tack belt right here, he's got some pouches right here. Looks really nicely done. And then flipping around to the back, nothing really continuing on here. This is a sculpted uh, belt here, so it's not really removable or anything like that or movable at all. Um, the pouches on the sides are a little bit on the large side, I would say, for modern figures. But they, they served its purpose, and I really can't complain too much about it at all, uh, to be honest with you. I like the sculpted detail for the belt buckles here and on the other side as well. Looks good. And then the feet are just kind of like a plain Jane uh, gray that continue throughout the wetsuit. I like the, uh, the sculpt and the gauntlets too. Looks really good. Maybe these are used for defensive uh, capabilities in case someone's coming at him with a bladed knife and he can almost Wonder Woman his way out of it. <laughs> but that looks pretty awesome. Um, I also just, I just love that he is set up to be... Uh, he, he's given everything that he needs to be what he is. He's a Cobra Eel. You know what I mean? Like, he needs to do everything underwater. He's demolition... Um, I think his head off. He's a demolitions expert, basically. Underwater demolitions expert. Uh, I really like this chest piece, too. I don't know why, for some reason. It is just kind of like a floating piece. But I think it really does fit the, uh, the overall aesthetics and look for the figure. Kind of brings it over the top. And they could have went without that that piece right there but um they they didn't they uh, included that and it looks really good like i say so there's that and then we'll put his helmet back on and he is known as a frogman which is a would be a diver uh i think on the 50th anniversary one um i'd have to go get him which i don't have him handy right now but there's a little bit of, uh, different of a paint deco i think he's got like a gray or not a gray a gold uh uh, I want to say a gold symbol right here. Maybe a little bit uh, more paint detail going throughout the rest of the helmet here. Um, like I said, he's got different articulation as far as the hands go for the 50th anniversary. He does have a uh, hinge joints on the wrists. Um, and I actually use my 50th anniversary um, uh, Cobra Eel as my officer. So he's kind of the leader of the, of the bunch because he, you know, he's got a little bit different insignia and differences here and there. So... Um, let's just put his knives back in here, and then we'll continue on to my Cobra Piranha boat over there, which I think is one of, like I said, one of my favorite vehicles as far as that goes. I want to say on the Joe side, like I said earlier in the review, in the beginning of the review, uh, on the Joe side, it's definitely always been the Double Fish. I just, I just love that little boat, and... Uh, yeah, really happy about these 25th anniversary figures. They do hold their own still, I want to say, to date. Uh, even though, uh, you know, a figure is necessarily a little bit older, got a little bit more date to it, doesn't mean necessarily that it is a poor figure. As long as it, it, it fits within the means of form and function, that's all that matters to me. You can two-hand his, his uh, I almost said gun. You can two-hand his harpoon gun, and it looks really good. Really pleased with uh, what Hasbro did here as far as the Cobra Eel. Really like the gold insignia. It really just puts the figure over the top with the display stand. Man, remember the days of display stands? Those those days are long gone nowadays as far as most figures that we get. Um, so there's the Cobra Eel. Really pleased with that. Happy about that. And like I said, if you haven't picked up the Cobra Eel, please do so. Do yourself a favor and go pick that guy up. He is a beautiful, beautiful piece. And if you haven't picked up the, like I said, the Cobra Para Viper, you should definitely go pick him up too. All right, so moving on, we have the Coup de Gras, as I like to say. The the main attraction for this, uh, I, got, I guess I'm going to say dual review here. Uh, just two of my favorite Cobra things to review, and I just, I had to do something special for Cobra Convergence. So here we have the Cobra Piranha. Uh, now, I do have a couple of these, but this specific one is one that I've had since I was since I was a kid since 1990 that was its debut for the uh, vehicle here um, there are, as you can see there are some missing pieces but I kind of wanted to keep it as much as possible 
uh, as far as when I had it as a child. Some of the stickers did come off. This sticker on the side is actually vintage from 1990. Uh, I did not replace it with any, uh, you know, repro stickers or anything like that. That's original. Uh, I'll, I'll, the majority of these are original. As you can see, they're a little bit dirty, too. Uh, <laughs> as much as I try to clean them, I try not to clean them too much because it, it does uh, start to corrode at the adhesive. And then these start to lift off. And, you know, so there is a little bit of dirt in there. I guess I could get in there and clean it up a little bit more. But uh, this is an absolute beautiful piece. I love this boat. And I really feel like it's the superior of the two boats when comparing it to the Devilfish. I mean, if you if you look at the armament here, it, it's far, far more superior as far as what it what it uh, uh, has as far as uh, armament goes. Um, I am missing two of these drop capsules right here. Um, that that are depth charges is what I should call them because that's what they're called. Um, there's a uh, you know that's I think pretty much the only thing missing from this are the depth charges. So. I'm hoping when I go to the Columbus Toy Show this year with my good friend uh, Strident that we can pick up those depth charges. Uh, but anyway, uh, like I said, this is something I've had since I was a kid. And as you can also see, there's another missing piece right here, which is the clip for the vintage action figures, which actually I think was a little bit overkill. Uh, even for 1990, I, I feel like these really didn't need a clip to hold a figure in. Uh, and we're going to get to that in a second. But I also want to do a little bit of a... Uh, a backstory here, and I actually do have the issue of the first appearance of the Cobra Piranha, which is G.I. Joe 110, featuring the Saw Viper. And we all know how infamous this this uh, <laughs> uh, issue is. And I'll go to page 14, which is the first appearance of the Cobra Piranhas right here. As you can see, there they are kind of storming the uh this yacht here with the cobra uh, hammerhead there and as you can see there's another one down here you can't see who's driving it which that's why i kind of drew the cobra eel in this review is because i feel like if you don't have a cobra eel in this boat what's the point you know uh, i know on the packaging it did include a picture of a range viper but i don't really think the range viper fits this theme here I think, you know, it's got to be a, a C uh, character, a C-based character, a C-based uh, um, officer, um, or I want to say operator, excuse me. Uh, all of the above, right? Uh, but uh, <laughs> so there's your little uh, backstory there as far as that. So it was featured in G.I. Joe, a real American hero from the Marvel Comics run of 110, uh, featuring the Saw Viper on the front. And uh, page 14 if you need the reference. Anyway, uh, getting to this, as you can see here, um, it, based off of the logo here is from one of my favorite boats. I want to say probably my favorite, one of my favorite G, uh, Cobra vehicles is the Hydrofoil. But this is a much smaller version of that Hydrofoil logo. Um, I guess you could use the uh, Cobra Lamprey as a... Uh, operator of this but i feel like uh lamprey's got his, his his work cut out for him with the hydrofoil so let's just stick him with that and then we'll put the cobra eels with this beast right here and this actually gives them a chance to go out somewhere dive in and have something at their ready to defend themselves in case there's large armament coming their way as well um but taking a look at the boat itself uh it looks really good i like this nice red it's very consistent with the hydrofoil itself. I think it looks really nice. Nice matching there as far as that goes. Not that it needs to match. It could have been a different color, but I really like it. I like the yellow too. I actually don't mind that it, you know, a lot of people mind that, oh my God, it's yellow. It's going to stand out. Well, who cares about that? It's GI Joe have an imagination, you know? Um, but taking a look as we have some missiles on the side here, and it's actually pretty cool that they're, they're angled downward like this. So it kind of makes sense they could drop down and then drop down and get your eagle on, you know? They fall right into the water and then take off. And they actually do have two little propellers right here and this nice twisted look for each. And as you can see, they are a almost like a guided missile right here. 
as you can see, we have some almost computer-esque or maybe like a, a, a hard drive right here kind of communicating to the Piranha of where this guided missile could go. So that's pretty awesome. I really like that added detail with the the missiles themselves. Or I shouldn't say missile, I should say, uh, um, what you call it, uh, torpedo. Uh, on the bottom is very similar to the Devilfish. We have a uh, two torpedoes, two smaller ones, and these also do have little propellers on each. They are the same for each. And as you can see, the propeller there. These don't look as, 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 as uh, I want to say, uh, as a guided missile, as more so as you just kind of shoot straight at something and then hope and pray that it doesn't, you know, float off or <laughs> head somewhere else, you know? So that's pretty cool. I like that these are hidden similar to the Devilfish. Obviously, the Devilfish had larger torpedoes on the bottom here. Uh, and I'll do a quick little comparison with that right here. As you can see, the similarities here between two bo both the boats. And as you can see, they do have a couple torpedoes on top of the boat, which, which would fly off into the water. Looks pretty cool. Um, but, I mean, when you're comparing how many missiles that this has and overall the how much larger the, I want to say, the piranha is to the devilfish. I mean, there, there they are, but to... But the snout there, and it's much larger. But still, nonetheless, both boats serve their purpose and look good. Uh, but here is the huge deciding factor between both boats. Um, it's it's the engine. I mean, look at this engine. It's not only the armament, but this, look at the, look like this looks like like two motorboat engines, right? And this thing is like, like it looks like something that would be on the, the bat boat. It, this is like a huge jet engine on the back of this thing. So I, I mean, not only can this thing, uh, this thing's armed to the teeth, but it can also just get away as fast as possible if it needs to. I mean, look at the size of that engine. It is huge. And much needed, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Especially, I mean, if, that's why I feel like it's it's so fitting for a Cobra Eel to have this boat. It's just so cool. It's like the ultimate boat. The ultimate small armament boat. But there's your little comparison with the Devilfish there. Um, and we also have two smaller torpedoes up here, which are actually the same as these bottom torpedoes down there. Um, and I guess you could also fire these off and I guess these would maybe fall down now this is what I think as far as my theory is as to how these would work not a hundred percent you know if I'm off let me know in the comments below I'm I'm open to constructive criticism or correction um, but what I would think is now using my own imagination obviously these are not going to fire straight because they're actually kind of pointed towards the boat and as you can see it would almost hit the boat and you don't want that happening because then you'll, you'll blow yourself up. So my theory is, is that these would almost fall to the side. They would almost drop like this into the water and then take off, uh, which I think makes more sense. Let me get back on camera here so I can show you my, my theory here. They would drop into the water and then go forward. So I think that makes the most sense. I mean, I guess if they have like super propulsion here, they could go flying straight off and then go into the water like so but i would i think as far as designs go i think dropping them off to the side kind of like the the um uh what you call it the the drop drop bombs right here i'll just call them that i forgot what they're called all of a sudden <laughs> um i think it makes more sense that way but that's just my theory i mean i'm sure everyone has their own or maybe there's a actual um answer to that uh, you could uh, throw that in the comments for me uh, moving on to the uh, the guns here that actually do swivel these these two huge guns in the front that do swivel side to side so he can protect his sides here which is really nice I think it's an another nice added bonus for that and it does come with two handles right here for the driver to kind of maneuver if he needs to 
So that's really cool. I like that. Um, and even, I wanted to point this out because I didn't see a whole lot of people pointing this out even in, uh, on, uh, I don't think it's even a thing on YoJo. Uh, I'm going to try and get in here as, as much as possible. But, uh, and it's really hard to point out. But there are two sculpted in here. Uh, there are two sculpted um, petals in here, which is a really nice touch. They didn't have to do that. They really could have just stopped where they were with the sculpt. And uh, I know it's tough to see here because it's so deep in here as far as the, uh, the leg room goes. But there are two sculpted petals in there, which is really nice. They didn't have to do that, and they did. And it's a, it's a nice added bonus to this vehicle. Um, also, look at all the sculpted detail for this seat. He's got some, like, uh, some little uh, gadgets right here. He can, he can, or, or some controls right here on the sides that he can play around with. You can use your imagination to say, maybe these, these fire missile one, two, and three, and then this controls where the missiles are going. Uh, as you can see, it's almost like a little handle, a little joystick right there. So that's a nice little touch as well. I think a lot of the detail with the engine here this, this massive jet engine that I want to call, that's what I want to call it. Um, I love the sculpt, the detail going throughout that. Um, I love the little gauges going throughout on the, uh, the front here. I think that's a really nice touch as well. Um, overall, very well detailed boat uh, on the inside. And this actually does come in a couple pieces when you get it. Uh, that I do remember. There was actually instructions, uh, blueprints, as I should, as I should uh, correct myself there, and say that... Um, yeah, this actually came in a couple different pieces. You had to clip this together. Um, I'm obviously not going to do that because the clips are so old and I don't feel like going through all that. But uh, you get the picture for the most part. Uh, but just taking another look at this this back portion of the jet engine, just how much beautiful just sculpted, de sculpted uh, detail is going throughout this. I know it's just a yellow plastic and at the end of the day, maybe I'm making it seem more awesome than it actually is, but... I really can't appreciate the uh, the time and effort they put into making this interior look as good as it does. It actually really does look good. So there is the Cobra Piranha. And it's, like I said, it's one of my favorite Cobra vehicles. Even though it's small, it's simplistic. Uh, well, actually, I wouldn't say too simplistic. Um, it looks really good. It's very eye-catching it grabs your eye like the devil fish does grab your eye but this not only grabs your eye but it keeps it there <laughs> and you're like wait what is that that is so awesome looking um and i'm not just geeking out here just just because you know it's one of my favorites and i'm trying to be biased here it comes with uh form and function it, this this boat can also float and it still does and unfortunately i can't show you a test of that because I don't have any water buckets around here but I, you'll have to take my word for it um, it does float um, this thing is from 1990 and it still floats okay um, the, now if you do end up purchasing this I would say it probably goes for around the $20 price point um, I, I'd say you don't really want to go past uh, go past around 25 bucks for this I think that's kind of pushing it um, definitely don't want to, I don't think it's worth 30, $30 price point. I definitely don't think it's worth that much. Um, unless it's fully complete and it comes with the box and the blueprints and everything, then I'd say spend around 30, 35 bucks for it. Um, but with that being said, I would definitely give both of these a two thumbs up. Highly recommend you pick these up. Um, and, uh, I'll even recommend this guy. I'll throw the, the pair of Viper in there too. He's, he's a beautiful figure. Love that figure. Uh, all right, now I'll get out. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is my uh, contribution to Cobra Convergence. This is my, this is the third year for Cobra Convergence, and this is my first addition to Cobra Convergence. So, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, give me a like. If if not, uh, give me a thumbs down. But let me know how I can improve my content. And uh, Yo Joe, Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Definitely had a lot of fun geeking out with you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the flip side.